lose it too. Remember that? Acts, no, 1 Samuel chapter 13. I'm already read. Okay, so I am on verse number 14. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou has not kept that which the Lord commanded yeah. thee. Let me stop right there. Yeah. Saul had the kingdom. He didn't obey God. He started going towards the witchcraft way. So God took it away from him. Look for a man that was after his own heart. God found him and God blessed him. David. Yeah. Let me share this with you. Okay. Break down. Recap. Here we go. Samuel. God tells Samuel. Go find me this man. Go find me this kid. Because David was only 17 years old when Samuel found him. Found him. Check this out, people. So Samuel goes looking for him at the house of Jesse. Jesse is David's dad. But we all know that David wasn't from the mother, from the same mother as the rest of his kids. We know that if you read your Bible. Because the Bible says that all the other kids were tall and dark. Tall and dark. Handsome, tall and dark and handsome, <laughs> right? That they all look. And David, Jesse had David out tending the sheep. Like, hey, you know what? Let me get this little light-skinned boy that I got here with colored eyes. Colored eyes because Samuel says in the Bible that his eyes were light. They were light eyes. They were different eyes. So more than likely they were colored eyes, right? Mm -hmm. So... The rest of them did not have colored eyes. The rest of them were tall, dark. Never does it say that David was fair-skinned with colored eyes. So he was a child from someone else. And he had his mistake out tending the sheep. But Samuel said, no, 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 no. We're missing a child here. I see all your kids. I see that they're all tall, dark, and handsome. And they're all buffed out. They got their muscles. But you got one more that's missing. Oh, no, don't worry about David. No, no, David's out there tending the sheep. He smells like dung. No, no, not David. Look at this one. He's all big and buff. No, that's not him. Look at this one. He's tall and good looking. No, that one's not him. David, the little scrawny one, right? He was out. He goes, that's the one that's after God's own heart. So that tells you right there, God doesn't look at your features. He's always looking at your heart. That's right. That's right. He's always looking at where your heart is at. Amen. The Lord has been speaking to me all this week about Caleb. Everywhere I went, I met a Caleb. Hey, I'm Caleb. Hey, I'm Caleb. Hey, I'm Caleb. I'm like, what's up, God? What's up? So I, I get home. I get my Bible. And I start looking at who is Caleb. God, what are you telling me? God speaks. I, I really hope you know that. God speaks to you. If you start to run into the Roberts all week long, hey, hey, what's up, Robert? <laughs> hey, there's a, hey, look it up, man. See who Robert is in your life. God always speaks. It's up to you to pay attention. Amen? Oh, I haven't heard from God. Well, let me see. Do you have a relationship with God? Amen. Do you seek Him as your Father? Or, or do you just... Seek them when you go to church. No, it's relationship, not religion. Religion, you go and do your whatever you're going to do. Give your $2 and then you're gone. No. The Christian walk, the soldiers of Christ walk. We Amen. build relationships with God. We build relationships with our Father. Father, what do you want me to do, Father? Father, what direction? So David, back to David. We know that he was from a different woman, different skin, different eyes. But God looked at the heart. Just to let you know, no matter where you're at in life, God could find you. That's right. Amen. God could find you. Because Jesse tried to keep him in the back. <laughs> but great talent and a great heart 
will always be exposed. A great heart, a beautiful heart will always be exposed. God will find it and bring it to him. Exalt him. Exalt you. Amen. Amen. God is speaking to you. It's all about the heart. Always remember that. Just, uh, just the other day, I was speaking to Pastor Alejandro a while back. He was telling me the story about about uh, about this drug dealer, right, that, that used to go and feed the homeless. He says, hey, he used to use his money, his drug money, to go and feed the homeless. But he had told me it's not about the good works that this guy is doing. It's about the heart. Are you doing it just to try to be blessed? Or are you doing it because you love God's people? You want to see them saved. You want them to live the abundant life. So it's all about the heart. It's not about your good deeds or nothing like that. God, God knows. Many people say, oh, when I win the lottery, then I'm going to go and feed the homeless. When I win the lottery, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to go help the homeless, and I'm going to go to the nursing home. I'm going to go to the hospital to go pay. Yes, God, if you bless me with this lottery ticket, then. No, 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 no. You first. You first. You first. Let's see where your heart is at. Amen? Amen. God's always going to test your heart before he exalts you. Amen. Don't you think pastor was tested before God put him behind the pulpit? Don't you think God was tested before God approved me to stand behind this pulpit? Amen. Oh, we're going to go through it. We really are. Amen. Do not think for one minute that we're here up here for show and tell. That we're up here to, hey, look at me. Look at, no, no, it's not about that. God will test us, put us to a test. Let me see how much you love me. I'm going to put you through this. Let me see if you're still going to be preaching. I'm going to put you through this. Let me see if you're still going to stay with me. I'm going to put you through this. Let me see if you're still going to worship me and praise me. And then Job, and then Job said, regardless of what I go through, I'm still going to praise God. Amen. And God gave him double for his That's trouble. Right. Amen. Amen. So you're always going to go through a testing. Don't yeah. think you're not. Oh, do you really love me? Let's find out. Let's find out how, you, how much you really love me. That's right. Oh, oh never think it's, oh, my goodness. When God puts you through a test, oh, Amen. that might always be nice and lovely going to church, but once you're put to the test, we're going to see if you're going to come to the house of God and worship Him. Amen? Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. God will always put you through a test. Always remember that. Caleb. Let me tell you what the word Caleb means. This is what I found out. The word, the name Caleb means faithful and devoted. Amen. Devoted. No matter what you're going through. You're faithful and devoted. No matter how hard. There was times in my life that I would go and preach and there was only two people in the in the pulpits. It's okay. And that's what I would say. I said, God, I'm going to give him my all like I always do. Amen. I'm going to give him my best. Yeah. I'm going to leave it all there. Because you know what? Maybe that one person is going to go out and do something. Amen. Or that person is going to go out and save hundreds and thousands of people. Bring them to your kingdom. Thank you. So Lord. you always, God's always going to put you to the test. You don't got to have a big old place. But guess what? There might be one person. We like to call it the matrix, right? That's what the Bible calls it, the matrix. It's There's that one. Like Neo from, from the matrix, right? The one. There, there's always going to be that one that goes out and saves thousands. Amen. Billy Graham was one. He went and saved thousands. T.D. Jakes was one. He went and saved thousands of people. Pastor Rodriguez um, saved thousands of people. So, hey, God is moving people with the right heart. Amen. For, think about it. T.D. Jakes, just a small little story about this man. He was a laborer. A labor, digging ditches, digging ditches, using his money, the money, his paycheck. That's how he would keep the lights on at his church. That's how he, he would use that same money and go talk to his mom. Hey, mom, uh, do you want to give me your tithe now so I can use it so, oh, to pay the rent for the storefront? But he was a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. And God highly exalted him. 
means do you love the things of God or is it just week after week thing? Oh, it's something to do. No, 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 no. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. It's going to change you regardless if you want to or not. Don't be stubborn. Let the Lord change you. Let the Lord make you a better person, a greater person. Amen. God gave Caleb. God gave him because Caleb, Caleb followed him wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. When I did my research, Caleb was one of the spies, one of the spies of God. God sent spies to Jericho to go spy it out. Caleb was one of them. God sent Caleb to go spy out the promised land. Caleb was one of them. When the rest of them would come back with bad reports, oh no, we can't do it. No, Joshua, no, Moses, we cannot do it. These people are big. They're giants. We cannot take the land. We're going to lose. Caleb was one of the ones. If God is for us, who can be against us? He always came back with a good report because of his faith. He was faithful. Never think you can't accomplish it. Never think you can start your business. You can start your business. Never think you can't. Caleb was one of the ones that said, Oh, yeah, if God is for us, nobody can be against us. Oh, yeah, Joshua, we can take them. David, David was the same way. If, when David fought Goliath, what did he say? He has delivered me from the mouth of the lion. He has delivered me from the paw of the bear. He's going to bring you uncircumcised Philistine who defiles the name of the Lord. Amen. You're coming down. Come you're coming down. If God did it for, for this lion, for this bear, you're coming down Amen. too. It was his faith and his tenacity to go after the things of God. Amen. If God is for him, can't nobody Amen. be against him. Amen. 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 When I, I used to do missionary work in Mexico, they tell me, oh, pero hermano, los Las carteles y que esto y que el otro. I said, no, 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 no. If God is for me, who can be against me? If God is sending me, can nobody touch me? If God is sending me, can nobody harm me? Amen. You need to remember, this is a creator of the universe. He can push anybody out the way. He can move whoever he wants. He did it to Sal. Sal made a mistake. He brought up David. You need a position somewhere, a great job, a great position and you follow God, God can move them out the way and bring you in. That's right. Amen. Amen. He will. He will. No matter what your job title is, your job title, if you want to be exalted, humble yourself, God will lift you up. Amen. No, no matter what type of job you need. Be a Caleb. God gave them land, possessions, Rivers and springs, he gave him the best of the best for his following him wholeheartedly. Amen. And not, and not complaining. Because it's very easy to complain. Very easy to complain. Oh, oh but this shirt don't fit as good as it did. Complaining about silly stuff. Complaining, oh, nobody helps me. Oh, no. <laughs> my dad wasn't there, my mother wasn't there. Oh, my dog ate my homework. Well, you know what, I don't even know what else to But complaining, it will give you a spirit of a complainer. Mm -hmm. You always look at life negatively. Come on. Negatively. Come on. But if you speak positivity, positivity, right? What is God trying to teach me here? What is God trying to teach me? Oh, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to build a relationship with my daughter. And she went off at me, right? Ooh, right? Like, ugh. she let me have it. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't there for her. I mean, I was married to my first wife. She's my daughter. But I'm trying to build a relationship with her. She let me have it. She spilled it out. And I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> so, so, they're all looking at me, right? They're like, like. You done? I said, okay, thank you. Have a wonderful day. I still love you. You can cuss me out however much you want. I don't care. I still love you. I said, uh, I said better now than later. <laughs> better here than in, in public. <laughs> I said, but 
I said, you go ahead. If that's the way you feel, that's the way you feel. I said, but um, um, my mission, my goal is to win her heart. Amen. Amen. I said, so you know what? I, it, it, it's all my fault. I wasn't there for you. I said, it's my fault. I said, that's fine. But my mission is to win your heart. Amen. I'm going to win it one way Amen. or another. You can cuss me out. You can tell me whatever I want. I'm going to win your heart. I said, that's my goal. I said, but the thing is, do I look at it negative? Oh, you ungrateful little girl. I paid child support all these years and I supported you through college and you want to talk to me like that? Or do I just listen and smile? Okay, I still love you. Okay, you can tell me whatever you want. I still love you. Amen. Why? Because I'm the adult. All right, do, do I act like a child? No. I got to be a better person. The way God has trained me. God trains us. Amen. God will train us to be better people. Amen. To speak with soft words. The Bible says it there. Amen. A soft word turns away reproach. That's what the Bible says. A soft Amen. word. What if I, I was to tell her, Oh yeah! Or do I tell her, I love you. A soft word turns away wrath. Amen. Don't bring yourself down to their level. Okay? Don't never bring yourself down to their level. Once you bring yourself down to their level, it's not good. You're a child, too. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought Amen. like a child. But now that we're adults, we need to think like adults. Amen. All right? We become the greater people. And, and not just to them, to the, to the world system. Amen. Many of times when I was doing mobile showers, when I was doing stuff for the Lord, not for me, for God, people would yell at me. One person actually spat on me. Mm -hmm. Another person had told me, oh, you're racist. I said, dude, how am I racist, man? It, well, let me put it like this, right? Sazamora, Martin Street. The majority of the homeless people are Hispanics, Mexican, right? So there was one white guy in the bunch. <laughs> and so since I let in the Hispanics, Oh, you're racist. Why did you? I said, dude, you, you got to wait in line like everybody else, buddy. It's not just be, just because you're white, I'm going to let you go first. No. Oh, you, so I, I have to be the better person. I said, look, man, this is what they're doing. They're picking up trash. I come and run mobile showers. I give them a trash bag. They pick up trash. They bring me back a trash bag. They get to use my showers. And I give them clothes. I said, where is your bag of trash? Oh, I have to pick. Yeah, dude. You have to <laughs> clean up the neighborhood. I, I, well, you know what? It, it's, it works both ways. I will help you help me clean up the neighborhood. Amen. Right? Amen. Hey, man, if I just give you, give you, give you, give you, you're very ungrateful. But bring me something back. But where are you going to dump the trash? You don't worry about it, man. There's a dumpster right there. I will fill it up. <laughs> I said... It's not my dumpster, but I'm still going to go put the trash in there. But it's, it's no, it's, you got to be the greater person. Amen. Be the greater person. That's what God teaches us, to be greater. And it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> but guess what? Amen. You'll get there. It's possible. Mm -hmm. it's po hey, God will change your heart. God will give you the, the right heart. God, Amen. the Bible says, David even cried out to God, God, Make me a new person. Make me white as snow. Give me a new heart. Amen, amen. A clean heart. Amen. amen. That's a prayer that amen. we always got to pray. God, give me the right spirit. The right spirit. Amen. Give me a fresh... Right now, I'm going through a problem there at my house. So I try to fix it. It doesn't work. I try to fix it again. It doesn't work. I try to... <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. So... What I can do is complain and throw it all away. Say, you know what, forget it, leave it like that. Or you can ask God, God, give me a new way of looking at this yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. Give me a new mindset how I can get this fixed. Give me a new thing to where I can do it right. And God gave it to me. But it's the way we see things in life. Do you see them negatively or do you see them positively? Or do you ask your father, which knows all, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. All wisdom, all knowledge, he knows it all to, to give you the answer. Amen. When he's your father, he will tell you how to do things. Where to go, where not to go, who to follow, what not to follow. Should, should I go and buy a thousand dollar phone? Come on, thousand dollar phone. <laughs> My daughter, the iPhone 15. I said, no, this little phone just rings. That's all I'm going to give you. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. A thousand and change for a phone? I said, no. I said, no. I said, if they sell it at the flea market, I'll get it for you. I said, but more than likely they don't because, no. I said, no, but no. Even my son, I said, hey, son, let's shop online. We're going to see what we can afford. Okay. Amen. Grateful son. I got a grateful son. Amen. A grateful son. Amen. Just the other day, I grabbed him and I gave him a hug. I said, "Man, dude, thank you. I love you, buddy." Thank you, but Lord. think about it. Do you think that God wants a grateful child, or do you think God wants a ungrateful child? Oh. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Or ah, God, you should have gave me better. Uh, we were just talking about that in in the back. Oh, man, that I gave my granddaughter 10 bucks and that she was so grateful for it. It's like, it, it, a child like that, you just want to give her more money, right? It's like, here, baby, there's $100 bill just for being grateful. Amen. Amen. But what, what about the, great, the, the one that you give them, 10 bucks, and then they look at you. That's it? Yeah. Man, what am I going to buy with this? A bag of Doritos and a soda? <laughs> what about the hot dogs? <laughs> like, hey, <Change. laughs> right? <Change. laughs> like, dude, call it. yeah, no, man, be grateful, be humble. Amen. God will give you more. The way you look at life, the way you look at God is really the way you're going to look at people. Mm -hmm. That's simple. The way that you look at your father is the way that you're going to look at people. If you look at your father, the way I, the way with my son, He's grateful towards me. That tells me how my father feels about me. Thank you, Lord. It's the mirror effect. The way you look at yourself is the way people are going to treat you. The way you see yourself. Do you see yourself in victory? Look at all, all these women, all these girls that just give their bodies away. They just give them away because they want, they don't got no self esteem. esteem. They don't feel great about themselves. Yeah. They don't feel that they're victorious. But the way you look at yourself, like if you look at yourself that you're a prized jewel, that you're gold, that then like you are God's creation, because your Bible says that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. You're made perfect in God's eyes. The world system is what tears you down. The world will deform you. When you're into the world, it will deform you. Yeah, that's right. It will deform you. That is a fact. It deformed me. And being a child of God, I, I, at, at work, because I do run a business, I, I like saw myself always mad at work. I said, I love my job, but it was the people that were always making me mad, right? So there I am, just a grouch, just a grouch, uh, uh, humbug, uh, and, and they're paying me money, and I was like, uh, all right, just, just always mad. But it deforms your face. Yes. It's like, man, why are you mad? I'm not mad. Do you look mad? Oh, man. So I got to step back and I got to ask God, God, fix my face. Amen. <laughs> I, I say, give me a different different outlook. And till you lighten up, don't be so uptight. Enjoy life. Amen. Be happy. Amen. Be yeah. happy. Come Make on. yourself. Always remember this. Every morning, you got a choice. Be happy or you can be upset. It's all up to you. All up to you. If you wake up in the morning and say, man, this is going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. But if you're like, ugh, here we go again. <laughs> Guess what, man? There you go again. Yeah. There you go again. That's all the way you look at life. Blessings, blessing upon blessing upon grace upon grace. Victory upon victory. Amen. That's the way you got to look at life. I'm a child of the Most High God. That's right. Yeah. Amen. But when God blesses you, just don't come to the house with a dollar. Hey, give what's due to the King of Kings. Amen. Hey, he blesses Amen. you to give unto the King of Kings. Right. Hey, for the ministry, for 
the gospel to being preached on. You know, these lights, they just don't turn on by themselves. You know that, right? Amen. There's a meter with a little switch, and, and if uh, we don't pay that bill, it they turn off. You know, there's some cookies in the back. You know those cookies ain't free. <laughs> They're not donated by, 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 uh, by the food bank. <laughs> We gotta buy them. <laughs> well, not me, but the pastors. But there's always a cost. It all comes with a price. Amen. Just like you were bought with a price, everything comes with a price. And with that, I'm gonna close. The mission, the mission. Seek after God wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. Let me share this with you. God knows the end from the beginning. You can you could play man, you can play woman. But you can't play God. Right. You can never play God. I, I do real estate. Do uh, do properties. My my first two homes, my first two houses that I bought, it was such a blessing. I, I've had these properties for 20 years. No, 30 years. 25 years. They're worth crazy money now. But when God gave them to me, God used a woman named Mary and a man named Joseph Amen. to sell them to me. <laughs> and they sold them to me in payments. <clears throat> Two houses for $15,000. It was like $7,000 a piece for a house with a big old property to where we actually split the property and put another house behind it. Residual income. But God already knew what I was going to be doing in the future. Amen. Seeking Him wholeheartedly. Amen. God knows the end from the beginning. Don't fight Him. You're not going to win. You are not going to win. If God wants you to do something, just do it. Will God send somebody else? Oh, do you want me to swallow you up? Like I did Jonah? <laughs> you want me to swallow you up? You could run and run and run. You ain't going to beat God. God is going to find you. Hey, if God gave you something to do, just do it. Amen. Don't fight them. Things will go smoothly for you. Life only gets better. Amen. Amen. Don't be a, be a Caleb. Don't be a Jonah. Be a Caleb. Don't be a Peter. Peter was a good guy. No, Peter was one of the disciples. Be a Peter, but he doubted walking on the water. He got his eyes off of Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Put Jesus on your forehead. Think about Jesus. Jesus has all wisdom. All wisdom. You want, you want to graduate from college? You want your master degree? Come Jesus on. knows it all. Jesus knows it all. Jesus, download to me everything I need to know. Boom. There you go, son, daughter. You just got your master's. What college? God, what college should I go to? Do I stay in Texas? That's what I tell my boy all the time. I said, please don't leave me. I said, please do not leave the state. Stay in Texas, son. I said, don't go to Boston. Don't go nowhere up there. We like Boston, but we love Texas. I said, stay in Texas, please. But do what God wants you to do for him. Amen. Amen. Seek him the mission. Be approved of God. Be approved of God. The mission is to go tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. What Jesus Christ Amen. has done for you, what Jesus Christ can do for them. Amen. If they didn't like him, they're probably not going to like you. But there's some people that they're down on their luck. They're at the bottom of the pit. You can bring them out. Amen. Always remember this. It's just like the church. Very few of us do for it. The rest don't. The same thing when you go and save people, when you go talk to people. Amen. Many of them will not receive it. But a few will receive it. Some will. Some, some will. will. And the ones that do, guess what? Hey, you did your job. Right. You did your job. Many times when I would go out there, oh man, they would treat me bad. But guess what? There was always one person that would touch my heart. And that kept me going back. Amen. Always one person Amen. from like 20 of them. Quick like testimony. So I, I like take my clippers to go cut hair. I got my mobile showers there. Hey, these are talents and skills that God gave me throughout the year. So Amen. I use them for the kingdom. That's right. Just to tell people, hey, about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, man, God is good. And hey, 
you're living, you're breathing, you're walking, you're talking, you're blessed. Because you could be dead or, or life in prison, right? So once they start to see things like that, their mind starts to change. So I'm, I'm like cutting this guy's hair, and, and then the dude told me, he goes, hey, man, um, let me tell you something. I said, what's up? He said, dude, it's my birthday today. And this morning when I woke up, I, I, I prayed to God. And as God, God, all that I want is my haircut and a shower. Yeah. He goes, and you showed up with both, man. Yeah, and it's you, like, Lord. oh, thank you, Lord, for using me Amen. to bless this kid, Amen. man. So it's, hey, God will use you if you let him. A man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let, let's walk the beat. Walk the beat Amen. Amen. of God's heart. Amen. When we do that, it's a beautiful thing. Don't be stubborn. Don't be proudful. Come on. Listen. God always speaks. Amen. Little children will teach you something too. Don't ever think just because they are who they are that they can't teach you nothing. Life will teach you through children, through nature, you name it. God always speaks. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm going to close. The mission, be approved of God. Seek after God's heart, God's own Amen. heart. And God will raise you up and use you. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb.